Thank you very much Fiona. I would like to ask Warwick. Warwick, uh, Mr Key from the Aegis Field Centre has come along also to give us his views. Thank you. I'm going to sit if that's all right. Um, thank you very much. I, I will try and keep this as brief as possible. I suspect I may cover some ground that's already been covered, so bear with me. I just want to um, introduce myself and Ava Skills Centre a little bit more thoroughly. It's going to sound a little immodest, for which I apologise, but I hope that you'll, you'll come to see that it, it um, is relevant. We employ 28 people in Strathglass. We contribute something like £1.5 million to the local economy every year. We bring 600 guests to the Highlands every year, six to 700 guests, many of whom come from the United States. And an absolutely vital part of that experience, which we've been delivering for um, 40 years now, is going out on Sarah Pern's boat uh, eco-ventures from Cromarty to go and look at dolphins, uh, and also to stand on the end of Chandlery Point to look at dolphins, as well as enjoying the fantastic rural and agricultural landscape of um, the rest of the Black Isle. And I'm incredibly proud of what we've been doing for the last 40 years because it represents and is part of our most important industry, and that is tourism. We shouldn't forget that tourism in the Highlands employs more people than any other industry and it brings more money into the economy than any other industry, and that includes oil and gas. It is our most vital industry and we should do everything that we can to protect it. It offers long-term employment to local people, and it is sustainable. You know, our tourism industry, based on our fantastic natural assets, can go on forever if we look after those things. And it's also an example of a business that treads lightly on our earth and cherishes <coughs> our natural environment. And so, as I say, I'm very proud of that. The prospect of ship-to-ship -ship transfers in the heart of these extremely sensitive dolphin feeding grounds horrifies us all at Agus Field Centre, as I'm sure it does you all too. I've also had an opportunity to look at the Cromarty Port Authority's glossy brochure, and so I just want to make a couple of points specifically about that um, before finishing off on a more general point. This um, piece of cleverly and glossily put together um, PR promises, and it makes a great um, deal of, uh, of ground on the safety of the ship to ship transfers. Well, the oil industry safety record ain't that great. Um, no doubt the people of Cornwall had been told that oil was safe until the Tory Canyon ran aground on their shores. Probably the people of Alaska had been told that the oil industry was a safe one until the Exxon Valdez ran ashore there. The people, the industries, the businesses and the wildlife of the Gulf of Mexico no doubt had been told that the oil industry was a safe one until the Deepwater Horizon blew up. And this very year, an oil rig has run aground on our shores. So, how can we know with any certainty whatsoever that ship to ship transfers are safe? Could be safe for the next 50 years, but it only takes one disaster and we'll be living with the repercussions of that for generations. The glossy brochure also makes much of the abundance of cetaceans, as, uh, as was mentioned just now, uh, despite the oil industry. Uh, as if the two somehow go sort of gaily hand in hand through, uh, through the years. The truth is that our cetaceans are not in a very happy place in, in our waters. We've got sperm whales um, beaching themselves in larger numbers than ever before in the North Sea. Our orca population contains enormous accumulations of toxic chemicals in their bodies to the point that they are now no longer a viable population. They're not breeding. They're so toxified that they're unable to reproduce and they will die out when those animals that exist in the population at the moment reach the end of their lives. Our cetaceans and other precious wildlife are at threat and huge tankers in their feeding grounds simply cannot help. That is self-evident. I want to finish on a, on a broader point. 
I spoke to a community council meeting in Cromarty on um, this terrible proposal uh, some months ago. Since I did that, the, the world has profoundly changed. President-elect Trump represents a rising of some very alarming interests. He represents big business over environmental concerns. <coughs> he represents big oil over climate change <coughs> concerns. He represents multinationals over small communities and the individual. And he represents boom and bust over sustainable local business. He also represents industrialization, where in this case, appropriate rural development would be so much more appropriate in our post-industrial society. Now, small communities all over the world will be living in fear and trepidation as a result of uh, recent political developments in the States. And there's not much that we can do about that here in the Highlands, but we can fight our own local battles. And I think this application represents everything that is wrong with an industrial period of yesteryear, which has led us to a point today where we are in crisis. We should be in no doubt about this. In our lifetimes, the lifetimes of most of the people sitting in this room, we have lost 40% of vertebrate life on this planet. That is a catastrophe. We are on the verge of a significant period of climate change. No one in their right mind can be under any doubt about that. We must fight this local battle. This application is terrible. I urge you to get behind Cromarty Rising and, and fight it very vigorously indeed. Thank you for your attention.